Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Kirillian Duo podcast. Today we have with us Ryan. So, Ryan, please do an introduction for the people who don't know you. Do an introduction for especially about for me also because maybe there are some stuff that I, I don't know about you. So, I want to, for you to do the introduction how you want to do it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you having me on here. We've been connecting on LinkedIn for just a little while. And, and, and as I said off camera, we I've been seeing your posts nonstop. And so I appreciate the hustle and I like it. <laughs> Always pushing more content, which is great. Uh, but yeah, a little bit about myself. My name is Ryan Sullivan. I've been creating podcasts for four years now. I've been be creating them for other people for two years now. And, uh, you know, it started with my own podcast in 2018. I have been a Joe Rogan fan and podcast fan for for well before it was popular. And I don't say that because I want the recognition. I just say that because there was a time when Joe Rogan's podcast wasn't the biggest podcast in the world. And, you know, I was listening way back then. So, you know, but I, I was a mechanic for, for three or four years. That was my day job. But I wanted to make my five to nine, my nine to five. So I wanted to everything I was doing when I came home at night, I wanted to make that my day job. So I set out on a mission while I was in college to become a freelancer. Uh, I made $80 in three months. And I said, all right, I guess this is going to work. So let's do it. Um, and I, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to the story. I worked on podcasts with celebrities that completely failed and fell on their face. Um, I worked on small podcasts with no budget that ended up being, you know, super successful. So I've done a little bit of everything in the space in terms of podcasting and content. Um, I'm also ra a rapper and a producer and a DJ. So that's my other life, but we could go into that as well. But, um, you know, in terms of this show, um, what's relevant to your audience is probably the podcasting side of things, but that's just a little bit about me. I, I own a business called Podcast Principles, and we help people launch podcasts from the ground up. So that's really what I'm doing right now. And you know, we can go in any any sort of direction you want to go. Yep. So for the people that don't know me that well, um, I'm all in into podcasts. I love podcasts so much because you can do so much with them, and I like. I feel like people are uncomfortable just speaking to a camera or like a webcam on their own, but I feel more comfortable speaking to like a person because I, I feel like someone is hearing me and I can feel like someone like nodding or like, I can see the micro expression. So like, I cannot see the micro expression of a camera. So I think I'm not alone because it's kind of weird speaking to a camera than speaking to like a person. Although like from the other place of the world, whatever you know, call it, just feel like different. So. Um, for the people who don't know what I've been doing, I heard that go LinkedIn, go on LinkedIn, connect on LinkedIn, post on LinkedIn, huge organic reach on LinkedIn, huge opportunity on LinkedIn. I've been doing that, huge organic reach, cool, yeah, get that. Um, high quality leads, cool, yeah, get that. But where I, I don't see any high quality leads and stuff. I see more opportunity on Twitter, sure. Like Twitter could not have like huge organic reach, but I just see a community who's actually valuable, who actually are more interesting. Like I think people LinkedIn, I don't know, something clicks off. What do you think? Yeah, you got to play to the platform and also you have to play to the platform that works for you. So myself and my partner, um, my, my project manager, me and him have have... I, I've spent two years on LinkedIn figuring out LinkedIn. I can tell you that 100% it gives us it gives us 95% of all of our leads on a weekly basis. Um, lots of booked calls, but we have a system. I've create I've literally taken courses. You know, Justin Welsh, for example, I bought his $100. $50 course. I took the course. I developed a strategy. I put the strategy in place. I iterated on it on a daily and weekly and monthly basis. And LinkedIn works for me. But my assistant and our other partner in our business, he doesn't vibe with LinkedIn. So he went on Twitter and he made two posts and got a booked call out of that. Right. So the it just depends on who you are. And it also depends on the actual strategy. It's easy for people to go on LinkedIn for two months or two weeks or two days and say it doesn't work. But what if you did it for a year? And so that's more the mindset I have. I think people have a have the short term thinking with social media because everything's so fast. But the truth of the matter is, it's actually a long term game with short little I don't want to get too Gary V here, but it's really a long term game by making incremental changes day by day. So you got to play to the platform. LinkedIn might not be right for you. Where are your customers at? Wherever they're at, that's where you got to go right? That's really yeah. it. That's how I look at it. Exactly. So 
for the people who are, I think, in our niche, more like B2B, I'm guessing you're more B2B. I'm actually um, B2C, but it's, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think that that matters really at all. But in terms of what I do, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't have to differentiate between either of them. I mm. sell to solopreneurs. So it's kind of B2B and B2B, B2C. It's kind of a mix, right? Hmm. Okay. So if someone was starting at zero on LinkedIn, what would, what would be your step-by-step -step process guiding them and giving them like all the knowledge that you have right now to them? It's, I would start with LinkedIn. I would start with XYZ. Um, it's called the XYZ statement. It's I do X through Y to achieve Z. So the I help people launch podcasts through a podcast launch system to help them accelerate their personal brand, right? That's I just made that up on the spot right now. Um, it's not that hard to do. Obviously, it's been years of me like figuring out what I do and who I do it for and how I do it. Um, but but those questions are what you have to answer. What I do, who I do, who I do it for and how I do it. So that's going to be your number first step, right? Who am I? What am I doing? Who am I doing it for? Next, okay, I know what I do. Now I got to figure out how am I going to give how how am I going to get myself in front of people? Not the platform, I'm talking the content. So what kind of content are you going to write? So that's what you're going to write. You might have to write it, speak it, record it on video, audio, whatever it is. But once you determine what you do, who you do it for, and what your value proposition is, then you have to determine what type of content you're going to create. And how do you do that? Well, you look at other people. That's what you do first, right? All they say, all art is copying. All content is copying. There's no really, there's not really any new content. You're just taking ideas from other people. Totally fine. That's the point. But you're really trying to develop step two of what type of content, because if you're a marketer, you don't look at the, the least successful marketer on LinkedIn. You look at the most successful marketer on LinkedIn. And so you go and look at them. What content is resonating with their audience? Well, oh, it turns out that they're making educational content or they're talking about the industry or they're having they're telling you their thoughts on a certain topical event that just happened within marketing. Right. So get those ideas from the top creators and then start doing it for yourself. Um, so that's what would be my approach. What do I do? Who do I do it for? Um, and how do I do it? What's my differentiator? OK, I know that that's going to go into my headline and that's going to help me create my profile and my story on my profile. Then what type of content am I going to create making that decision and then going ahead and creating that content on a daily basis? Okay. Inter yeah. Interesting. So what surprised you the most taking the Justin, w Justin Welsh course? Mm, what surprised me the most? Not what even surprised. surprised. Like what, what, what did you learn the most or like what, yeah, what do you no, think is valuable out for the audience? What has been the most effective for me, and I'll give you a tip right here that might change the game, is comment marketing, okay? You're con you are incentivized. Most people write great posts. This is awesome. Wow, this is great. Oh, I agree. Wow, this is awesome. That's the types of comments they write. I look at every comment as a post, not as a comment. So mm. I write all my comments as if they're posts because I want people to see my opinion. I'm literally on a, an account that might get on a post that might get viewed tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of times. I want my opinion to be there. I don't want something that says this is great because then I'm just telling you that I didn't really read the thing and I don't really care that much because I don't actually have an opinion on it. So the most surprising thing for me is comment marketing, dude. It is a game changer, especially on LinkedIn. We can talk about it on Instagram and other platforms. Twitter it probably works well there too, but but for sure, that's that's the most the thing that's really helped me the most. Mm -hmm. And how do you how do you find your target audience on LinkedIn? Do you go through hashtags? Do you just go through keywords? Do you go with how? Well, I think it comes back to that step one of like, who do I do this for? Why do I do it? Who do I do it for? And what's my differentiator? You're when you're starting out, if you have zero connections, you're going to start. First of all, I would kind of split it in a few different categories. The first category would be adding people that are at the top of my game. So if I'm using the marketer example, first, I'm going to add high level marketers. So constantly in my feed, they show up constantly in my feed and then I'll comment on their posts, my opinions about what they're saying. And then other people who like marketing will see that and then connect with me. So that's step one, the people who you want to emulate. And then the other split would be people who you want to buy from you. So that would be people that need the marketing that you sell. So say, let's, for example, it's B2B startup marketing for early stage startups who haven't raised their series A or whatever. Then I'm going to go and find influencers who have an audience of those people. 
and I'm going to go through their comment section and start adding all those people. And so that's how I would kind of start your, your networking um, is really be very specific about who you're connecting with. And then those who, well, who those big accounts are that have the audience that has the problem that you solve. Mm, okay. So what I did, I don't know if it's similar to you, but I don't know if you also did this, but for example, I would search on the LinkedIn search bar, like for example, hashtag startup or hashtag founder. And I would just comment on all those pages and I would just like follow them and connect with them. So in case they don't connect with me back because they don't know me, so that's, that's logical. Uh, I would just follow them so I can, I can provide value to their comments and stuff. And then, yeah, this is how I play. And also I just search like hashtag, not hashtag, sorry, entrepreneur or business owner or CEO. And I just follow them and connect with them and just maybe go through their comments and add some value. And then my feed is full of those type of people. And then I go through their comments. And if I cannot provide any value, I just like it. And then I just, again, follow and connect. But I think like also following provides like a huge impact because it's logical for people not to connect with you because there's a lot of marketers, marketers especially that connect and they sell you immediately. And I hate that. If you like for the people that sold me immediately, bye bye over. Yeah. Can we oh. just say like, if, if you, if you enter a direct message or any sort of message with anything that's related to selling, like you're in, you're going to oh, lose, God. like there's no, but I don't understand how people think that's going to work. Like, that's my thing. You know, I, I just don't like, I don't know how that, if that, does that work? Like I've never, I was never worked for me, but yeah, it just doesn't, I don't know. I agree with you on that. But the, the hashtags thing is a great point. I, it's not an integral part of my system, but one about like once a month, I'll go through the hashtags that are relevant to me and I'll go at a bunch of people. But now, like I said, I have a process, like most people are inbound, you know, so we have a system. And so most people do end up coming to me. Um, so I don't have mm -hmm. to do as much of that hashtags anymore, but especially if you're starting, yeah, get in there, man. Anything you gotta do. Yeah. So basically I had a few people that, um, sold me immediately without any, any, any value or anything blocked immediately. And was a, there was, a, there was a marketer who just connect, connected with me on LinkedIn. And they sold me immediately. So I accepted the connection. They sold me immediately. And then I went to see their page. I'm like, grow your personal brand through providing value. I'm like, okay, now I literally hate them. Like, oh, it, no, oh like, how about this example like, oh. though? How about this example? So you have these massive influencers. I'm talking a million followers on the platform, right? They're trying to sell you a system uh, on how to make content to attract your ideal customer so you don't have to do outbound and then they're in your dms selling you and doing outbound it makes no sense so yep. nothing is as it seems i don't trust any of these these not that i don't trust any of them i trust the ones i know personally austin belsack one of the biggest influencers on the platform i know him personally i've had him on my podcast i trust him right like there's certain massive influence that i do trust but I literally have an example that I just said of one that has a million followers and then is in my DMs trying to sell me while they sell a program, making sure that you, just to flex that you don't have to do that. Like, Oh, I, I think care. we're talking about the same person. Um, it's, I'll say that it's a female, but I won't go farther than that. Oh, no. Oh, fight. okay. Yeah. Female. No, no, yeah. not the same person. Also not another person. And I'm not like knocking them. I just think it's stupid. I'm not saying, do, I get, hey, get your money. Do as much outbound as you have to do. It just don't, why why, why sell one thing on the outside and then not actually do it, you know? Yeah. The, there's some people who basically um, try to sell something that, so the, they're trying to make most of their money by selling, by teaching people how to do what they were doing, but they weren't making the most of their money there. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that happens a lot too. I, so, so my, yeah, dude, I, I feel you. My philosophy, like I have two podcasts, okay? I've had a podcast for four years. I would not hire any podcast production company who doesn't at least have a consistent podcast, right? Like I'm not gonna hire a marketing agency who doesn't even do their own marketing, you know? And, but this is the mm. thing. If you have a Ferrari, your mechanic doesn't have a Ferrari, okay? So there's certain aspects of this that you, you don't have to actually have the thing that you sell but in the instances that we're talking about you really do yeah so here's the thing for example i wasn't successful at content marketing because i now i understand the reasons of because like i'm not great at, i'm not great at speaking or like i'm not great at ideas or video editing and stuff but i have the strategy 
and I know what you need to do. So with our future, I had him on my podcast. Long story short, he gave me like one week trial to help him. And like, um, I blew his channel up. Long story short, if you don't know, I took it. I took our future from 200, 250,000 subscribers on YouTube in the first 90 days organically. Yeah, that's that's about it, okay? Generated from him like in the first five months, 250 million views. So I wasn't successful before. But I proved it with other people. Yes, even that's yeah, but that's enough. That's more than enough, right? Yep. Consult every coach has their own coach. You don't have to coach yourself, right? I don't want I don't want my coach to coach himself. I want or herself. I want my coach to have a coach, right? So yeah, mm -hmm. no, for sure. Whatever the proof is, if you do it for somebody else, cool, that's fine. You know, like there's it's there what we're getting at here is there's nuances, but I'm definitely gonna have to talk yeah. to you about YouTube at another time for sure. I would love sure. to talk into that. Um, but the thing is coming back to your point, I can agree with you because, um, I think we're both on the same page because now with influencer marketing and paid social ads marketing, I'm going to run paid social ads on my business first, show people that it works. And then I'm going to charge people money. Like I have the strategy, but not because I have the team of like script writers, video editors, be, uh, um, designers, and I have the whole team. I can pay for them to join our forces together and create paid social ads marketing. And once it succeeds back to your point, then I'm going to open the service. Yes, you have an same, actual real same case for influencer study. marketing. You have referrals, yeah. Yep. So we're both on the same page, but yeah. So a good coach doesn't have, like a good basketball coach does not have to be a good basketball player. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they, maybe they were at one time, but yes, there's, there's, mm. there's multiple people though. Yeah. Like you've seen, like there's brilliant football coaches who they just know the game, man. Like they just know the game. They get, they have the crazy mind for it. And there's more <laughs> other people who are more like they did it. So they have that version and both are, you want to have multiple mentors in your corner, you know, if you can. Hmm. Yes, exactly. So how can we bring the most value to our audience? Is this something that you think will provide the most value to our audience? Well, if you want to answer like how to provide the most value, you're asking how to provide the most value. You're not asking how to provide value. So the most value would be to give away the most valuable information, right? Mm -hmm. Which is probably... The, the thing that you don't want to give away. So most people don't actually want to give away the most value. They want to provide value because they think that's what they have to do. But what I'm saying here is most people have like secrets that they don't want to give away about what they do, you know, Oof. but, but, it, but it turns out that if it, you could, I could tell you start to finish how to launch a podcast using all of my year, my years of experience and launching 15, 20 shows and all that. And you still, most people, 99.9% .9 of people are not even going to even try it. Yes, and here's a reason. People want to save time. They don't really care about the knowledge. You, th they want you to take All the care knowledge of that is out stuff. there on YouTube and podcasts exactly. and everything else. Yeah. It's everywhere. It's not the knowledge that's the issue. It's it's the actual work. The barrier to entry to all this stuff is work, you know. Yeah. Like we, we like we can both tell the audience like what they can do to explode like the social media channels, but Strategy is simple, but putting in the work is consistent day in, day out for multiple hours. So people do not want to spend that time like actually thinking of like ideas for paid social ads or like, I don't know, videos or like the podcast yep. and stuff. So they want people to do it for them. They feel like, okay, let me just give him the money and just like, I don't know, do it. I don't want to think about it. That's why our businesses exist, man. I mean, that's why my business exists. And and and, and the beauty of it is, is that we are providing, we're go always going above and beyond, always providing more than we're than our actual offer, right? But but yeah, I mean, listen, most people don't wanna sit around and edit their podcast and learn how to be an audio engineer and learn how to be a video editor and learn Sony Vegas and DaVinci Resolve and all these different programs and spend tens, thousands of hours trying to do it themselves. Like when they can just work a few extra hours a week and pay somebody else to do it. And, that, and that's just one example, but yeah, you're right, 100%. Yeah, that's true. Like I think also I provide people with free con like content strategy and whatever I got, like my best tips and tricks, like whatever, but they still want to work with me. They don't care. Like back to my first client, our future, I told him what he needs to do. Like I gave him my best tips. I, 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 give, I gave him the tips that he needs to, to explode, which I used to explode, uh, mm -hmm. to explode him. 
but he told me like stop giving me the advice just come on the team and do it like i don't have yes. time for you to implement this advice just come on i know i've sent it. so many people messages about what microphones to buy and stuff like that and it's like they just don't get back because they're not from they don't want to dial it in and they want to have somebody come there and set it up for them mm. and then just you they just click play man you know so yeah it's it's uh it, it's true but that's why I just give value, man, because people are going to hire you to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Why should people start a podcast? You say this multiple times, a thousand times, but for the brand new viewers who like don't know why did you start a podcast? Why should they do it? Yeah. I mean, you probably shouldn't because like just I wouldn't say like everybody should. Um, I think mm. everybody could try podcasting, meaning like being a guest. I think mm -hmm. that's a great place to start. In terms of why should you, um, you kind of have to ask like, why would you? And so what that leads you to is, what are you really trying to do? A podcast is great. A podcast can do many things. As you said, you're super bullish on it. You really love it. So do I. I've been doing it for a while. I love it. Um, it's a lot of work. So you really have to figure out First of all, the, spe the the first question I start with is what would you specifically like to address with this podcast? There's a lot of podcasts out there that are about any subject, right? Um, so you really, if it's once again with the marketing example, a marketing podcast is way different than a marketing podcast for B2B startups who are just got their Series A funding, right? A podcast about self-help is way different than a podcast about self-help for podcast producers you know so the more specific the better is always what i say but you really have to have an angle it's not like you have to invent something new you just have to know specifically what you're trying to address um and just have a have a reason for it and that leads me to the why right so why are you doing this what's your purpose right and sure you can be to make more sales or make more content that's completely fine just be upfront with why you're doing it in the first place i think a lot of people just jump in i don't think there's anything wrong with that i just think do some of the groundwork and some of the planning address what what would i like to specifically address with this podcast who is this podcast for and the one that I always see completely overlooked is what can the listener expect to experience right now we're in a person to person conversation going back and forth. That's the experience It's the experience of two people going back and forth in an interview style podcast conversationally right but not all podcasts are like that I have a podcast that takes me two to four hours to record five minutes right and so that but that's that's not the same as this show so what can your listeners expect to experience, right? So those are the three questions I always start with before you go like, why should I start one? Well, just answer some questions and it's gonna lead you there. Yeah, so I think one of the reasons why I like so podcast so much, excluding the part that you can repurpose a lot of pieces of content and like all the other stuff, and that like, if you're not creative, then you can just talk to another person. So for people who don't, don't have the creativity and then they can start a podcast and just speak about what they know, what they like, I think it's the depth of relationship that it creates with the guest and with the audience watching because it's like you kind of get like a more live reaction of like the podcast owner and the guest and it creates like a more deep relationship because it's not like a 15 to 30 minute YouTube video of like Mr. Beast because that's more like quote unquote fake or not as real or like not as Mr. Beast personality so you're not building that much relationship as you're watching I don't know 50 minutes of Joe Rogan or like 50 minutes yeah. of this podcast or your podcast yes you have to but but and you have to ask why why do people value that over a mass uh, not even mass media anymore because I consider podcasts and mass media, but over a legacy media format, which is CNN. Here's the segment. Like it's, you have two and a half minutes. You have a teleprompter, like bang, 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 bang. Everything's an agenda, right? Uh, the reason why that's, that's called processed information. That information is processed. They're only giving you what they want you to see in a podcast. Dude, I, dude, if I didn't really run podcasts, I could probably last about five minutes on this faking it right like you know it's real you know this is what i'm saying is real and you could go and verify it with all the stuff that i've that we've created or done but but a podcast you can't hide man it's real human conversation it's real conversation with per, from person to person so that's mm. why podcasting is so different and that's why people value it and on top of that what's happening is 
I'm we're in their ears, right? Like, so forever's listening right now. I don't know what you're doing. You could be running or jogging or walking or sitting at your desk and watching this as a YouTube video. But right now we're in your ears, whether it's coming out of the speakers or your headphones. And so that's way different than watching the news and then sitting on your phone while you're watching the news, right? So it's kind of two different things going on there, but that's really a big reason. Exactly. And to that part of faking it and uh, one last one last point and we have to close the, the podcast. We have to end the podcast. I think to the part of faking it, I'm kind of scared of bringing people on the podcast that don't know what they're talking about because I love to ask the question why. I love to challenge the guest. Why do they think that? I want to learn, bro. Like, I, I, I'm not just okay. Like, I think, I don't know if you were in, th- in 2019 where TikTok just started. I disagreed with the opinion of like using hashtag FYP or hashtag for you page. I'm like, that's freaking stupid. Okay. I, d- I don't understand why that's the case. So I, I like I like asking the question why it's a from the day that I was freaking born don't know why but yeah don't know why but I'm sure that I ask the question why all the time so I don't want to bring on a guest and freaking expose him like on the record so I kind of have this on the back of my head. I like that man I like that hey that's why I mean I really podcast because I like to have genuine conversations with people um, and have an excuse to ask them questions like that. And so that's that's what I do. A most mo- most of my podcasts are in person, um, sitting face to face with somebody, right? And so I have a little Oof. studio right right behind my camera here, and I've been doing that for for three and a half years. And you know that's really opened my mind to to this kind of thing of 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 getting down to those deeper details that mm-hmm. on social media, dude, you're not going to get that, you know. Exactly, and I hate overgeneralized advice. I hate it so much because you don't know what you don't know the context of that advice. You don't know if it actually applies to you. You don't know what they're coming from. So Everything's why... general on the internet, right? Like you can just search an article on how to make a podcast and it's going to be an article on SEO, like or designed just for <laughs> SEO so you'll click on it and it'll and it'll be an amalgamation of five other articles that they just copied and pasted and paraphrased. Like the more specific always comes down to be more specific, man. And so I love your approach, by the way. Uh, fantastic interview as well. You, you really know what you're doing here, man. You're gonna, you're gonna make some great content. You probably have already, but but I, I love that approach. Let's let's dig deeper if we can. And I, we probably would go another hour. I'm, I'm actually sorry that I that I ha- have exactly, bro. Like I've been trying to end this like podcast for the past 10 minutes, but because it's so great, I'm just leaving it to the last minute. Dude, I don't mind. It's all good. I, I, it's, I have another one after this. I wish, I wish, uh, I wish I didn't though. But let's, but that's the good thing. And for people listening, we're gonna bookmark a lot of subjects. So then, when we come back, we can just hit the ground running, man. So, so yes, I, exactly. So, that either. Thank you for coming on the podcast, man. I really enjoyed it. Anytime. Thank you for inviting me. I, I had a fantastic time. You're, you, you're a great interviewer. You have good energy. That's number one is the energy for me, man. I can tell you're excited <laughs> and 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 you're you got a lot of it. So thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it, man. Great. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.